Hello everyone, I am Walt and today we will be talking a little bit about some of the socialing Ugh, so words are hard sometimes. We're going to be talking through some internet psychology here, unit number six, socializing on the internet. Okay, what do we have to say first? Well, this series is going to be a little bit shorter, as I think it'll only be three videos for this unit instead of four, all that kind of fun stuff. So without further ado, let's dive on into this content. So here we are. Unit number six. Yes, 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 yes. Socializing on the internet. So we're going to be talking through a little bit about dating, and we're going to be talking through a little bit about bullying, cyberbullying, all that kind of stuff when it comes to the internet. So yeah, the first bit we have for unit, for our first part basically, of unit number six is simply going to be about online dating. So online dating, mobile app dating. We all know a little bit about this, I would assume, as, you know, this has been around quite a while now. It used to be things that were unpopular. It was known as scary technology. It was going to be terrible. It's got this. And some places have worse reputations than others for dating sites or dating apps and all that kind of stuff. But how come online dating is so popular? Why is the internet the place to meet people? Well, one category is simply based on the fact that you can have matching algorithms. You can have ways to find certain people, either out of interest-based algorithms, so simply swipe left, swipe right style information, or rather it can be have, you know, more complicated ways to put things through, you know, put things together with kind of various algorithms to match personality characteristics. And this can be extremely accurate when it comes to finding things that are compatible because people ultimately tend to like similarity a lot. Now, when it comes to personal, interpersonal attraction and things like that, really there's a thing when it comes to level of similarity being necessary, okay? So if you wanna have a couple kind of survive and uh, continue to do well, fight less, do that kind of stuff, then you need to have them have a certain level of similarity in their beliefs, their attitudes, things like that. Often things like their similar level in wealth and uh, economic status, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, that's a desirable trait in many cases where you have similar situations there because ultimately people like to be with others who are like them a majority of the time in a variety of ways in terms of their beliefs and stuff like that. Now, of course, online dating has increased the number of interracial marriages, for example, in the United States, so clearly it can diversify some things, but ultimately it can also help people find people who are very compatible with them. You'll notice a bunch of niche dating sites out there in the world of this. Everybody has their own kind of niche and their own uh, ability to look into those. You clearly have, you know, places where you have dating sites that are like millionaire people dating millionaire other people, you know, and exclusivity in that way. You've got places like Farmers Only, who's like trying to match up rural people and stuff with other rural people. A lot of these things are really trying to go for similarity in many cases because people desire often to be with people who are very similar. Now, this isn't always the case when it comes to levels of such as dominance and submissiveness. You don't want two people who are either both dominant or both submissive compared to the other in many cases many relationships you know have um, counterbalancing dynamics as well so that can be factored in but a lot of things are based on similarity so one of the powers that um, online dating really has is the power of similarity it's also got a power of shared interest and a power of the ability to um, connect with many people and to be able to you know uh, get rid of people easily without breaking hearts easily find people without putting your heart on the line etc so online dating has caught on a lot recently especially among younger generations and it makes a lot of sense there are also some interesting statistics when it comes to online dating that one might not suspect for example that when it comes to uh, couples and marriages, people are more likely to get married faster if they meet online than offline. And in the first year, less online-based marriages end up ending in divorce than ones in real life. You might think this would be the opposite, but it is not. So 
people who are married after meeting online tend to last a little bit longer, at least within the first year, <laughs> you know, compared to ones other than that. And you can see some other fun facts um, based on one of the articles I've linked up, some of the materials there as well. But really, there's some interesting material when it comes to online dating, people's ability to do that. I would argue that some of the biggest reasons for online dating, as there are many multitudes of them, some of the biggest ones I would argue here, for example, the ease of access as a medium to be able to meet people easily without having to put your heart on the line and, you know, do that kind of stuff. I would say that's a big ease. So convenience is a huge one. The ability to actually match with people based on algorithms and methods to try to find similarity a little bit better. I would say that that's another big one. <laughs> that kind of stuff can really be super useful there. And so those are some of the biggest reasons I would argue in that direction overall. But yeah, check out some of the articles if you want to learn more about the subject. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time as we talk a little bit about cyberbullying, bullying, trolling, and all that kind of fun stuff when it comes to socializing on the internet. And I'll see you then. Stay tuned. See you in the next video.